Hello everyone. Uh, so this is uh, for my third project for Comp 326. Uh, uh, some of you uh, who subscribe to my channel may be watching this right now, uh, wondering why I'm doing this. Um, so I decided to do my project on uh, the Priestly Voice Theory and uh, how that applies to a general conference. Now I know some of you may be thinking uh, that you know, I'm, I'm going inactive and all these crazy things, but I, I assure you I'm not going inactive. I'm just doing this for a project, and this is just purely for research purposes. This is not to imply that, um, you know, I'm dissenting or anything from the church. I'm still very, very faithful, and I tend to stay faithful all the way to the end of my life. Um, so just to uh, go over what uh, the requirements are, first of all, the thesis statement. Uh, social media uh, has been... A huge factor uh, in the role of spreading uh, the message of the church lately. Uh, many of the apostles are on Facebook and Instagram, and of course, uh, President Nelson, who is the prophet president of the Church of Jesus Christ, uh, is on social media as well. Uh, so, for that purpose, my my thesis statement was: social media empowers the prophet's priestly voice, allowing him to influence others to make decisions based on his words. Now, what does that mean? Well, in a postmodern society, we have grown very distrustful of religion in a general sense. And thusly, we have uh, become almost resistant to religious trans traditions because we feel that it's a governing authority and it's very totalitarian. And we don't want to listen to authority. We want to go off on our own. And so that's where social media comes in because we have so much access to social media, we're able to... Um, listen to the prophet's words, and at the same time, those who aren't members of the church are able to make decisions based on his words. Of course, 90% of them will disregard his words, saying it's not true, that nothing will bad will, may happen to them, and that's completely fine, which is where I took it, which is where I started to analyze it. Now, in communications, we talk of two things. We talk of the bardic voice and the priestly voice. The bardic voice seeks to confirm the beliefs of the community, and it seeks to confirm what people already know. The priestly voice, however, seeks to help people understand what they might become. Oddly enough, that's what we think about in the church. The prophet gives us an identity. The prophet gives us a way to look at our identities and to say, "This is what God wants you to become," or rather, "This is what Christ expects you to become." While in the bardic community, they expect to confirm their own beliefs and say, "Yes, that is exactly what I believe," or "No, this is not what I believe. This is what I believe." So there's a line in the sand already been drawn. Uh, between the bards and the priests and I generally characterize and I hope people will forgive me for saying this and I generally characterize those who are not members uh, who are not of our faith uh, those that are not active members or returning members returning to activity and those those who are quote-unquote active in the church who go to church and say the good church things and do the right church things but they're not necessarily active per se meaning they don't put their thoughts into action so that's where the line in the sand pretty much has been drawn between the bard the bards and the priests this is where social media comes in to allow the priestly voice of the prophet to, to spread to others to help uh, those bards make decisions on their own based on his words rather than looking at themselves and saying hey This is what I believe and this is what I know to be true But what about but then the priestly voice comes in and says well, this is what you should be doing This is what you should believe because this is what uh, This is what God expects you to become in the future And I could go on for hours, you know, and let me be clear right now Let me be clear right now to all those non-members that are watching this video let me be let me make it perfectly clear we do not as members of the church worship the prophet we do not consider him to be god we do not consider him to be jesus christ we simply consider him to be a mouthpiece for the entire church on the earth he is only a vessel to carry the voice of the lord to the rest of the world he is in no way replacing the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. He does not do that. He will never do that. And in fact, he never can do that because in fact, he is mortal. He is imperfect just like the rest of us. And I have understood that for a very, very, very long time since I have been baptized. So what does all this mean? Well, what does all this mean? What implications does it have? Well, for one thing, certainly, 
Um, for one thing, certainly, the implications of it is, is that social media will continue to spread. And we can expect that the priestly voice is going to continue to spread throughout the world. Why? Because many Latter-day Saints are encouraged to be missionaries. They are encouraged to spread the word and to share the message with those they come in contact with, albeit through naturally flowing conversations. So naturally, we can expect that as social media use increases, so will the spread of the priestly voice. This is what people will use in order to confirm their beliefs. And this is what people will also use to help show others this is what exactly they can become. But if you want to read more, if you guys would like to read more, just, just you know, shoot me a message or something or leave something in the comments because I would be happy to share this essay with you because I think this is a very enlightening thing that I think all members and non-members of the church should understand. I hope you guys enjoyed this because trust me, if you guys read my stuff, I'll help you understand it for sure. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. Have a good day, guys. See you later.